you are capable of being the person that you want to be. It's not impossible. It's not some fairy tale. It's not something that like only a certain amount of the population get to achieve. You can do it too. You just need to commit. You need to commit to the person that you want to be and you will slowly start to become that person. I literally feel like in just a quarter, my life is starting to change and I feel like this is just the beginning. Last year, I was like, I'm done with living someone else's life. I'm done with trying to accommodate to the world instead of having the world accommodate to me. I'm not realizing my full potential. This vision in my head this voice in my head is getting louder and louder and it's not matching my reality and at the end of last year i said i'm done with that i'm done with being in this waiting period and not committing to the person i know i'm meant to be and the life i know i'm meant to have and i think if you're not already there you will get there very very soon because i truly believe we are not supposed to be suppressing who we are accommodating to the world we're supposed to be living true to ourselves we're supposed to be free mentally financially physically we're unfulfilled we're bored we're comfortable but we're also uncomfortable i think that's because we're supposed to be challenging ourselves we're supposed to be going after things we think are unattainable because there's so many advancements i think we've tricked ourselves out of the idea that life is still hard life is supposed to be hard we're still on our own individual journeys nobody can hand you your dream life you have to create it and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today not just thinking of that dream life not just visualizing that dream life like actually living it committing to that person that you want to be and last year i realized that there is no magic trick to that gap there is no one size fits all to that gap it is a journey but it doesn't have to be unenjoyable. It doesn't have to be this grind, raw, raw. It can be fun. And I think the more aligned you are to what you want and who you are, the more this journey is just gonna feel like a part of your life. It's gonna feel like, oh my God, this journey to what I want is so fulfilling. It's so interesting. It's so challenging. It's so fun. And the cherry on top is that I get to live my dream life. And it starts off with just your job. It starts off with just your health, with your friends, your community. But it requires you to stop resisting it. It requires you to stop making excuses for why you can't get there. If you don't see it, if you choose to actively say no to this life it's not gonna randomly fall into your lap it requires you to take control and i know that can sound really scary but it's also extremely 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 liberating and i'm speaking from experience here the moment i decided to take control of my narrative and of my life last year in december and by the way it's only like march my life has completely changed because the best part is when you're living your dream life you don't have to be anybody but yourself you don't have to pretend you don't have to put on a mask you don't have to do things that you don't like to do and on top of that you get rewarded because the effort that you're putting out is exactly what you're getting back. If I'm showing up as the person I want to be, I'm going to attract the things that I want. And the only way to get there is to take control and commit to your own destiny. From here on out, we're done handing off our game plan and our life and our blueprint to someone else or to what society says is best or what your manager or your friend said is best. This is what you think is best and how you should live your life. I'm really excited to finally start exploring these topics. This is a part of a bigger series called the Dream Life Series. I have the first two videos which talk about the first two steps of this process that I believe has helped me get to my dream life and I think can help other people get to theirs which I like to call my three E's eliminate explore and exploit we are on exploit which is another word for committing and really focusing and honing in on the things that you've explored and choosing that one path and sticking with it and if it's your first time visiting this channel my name is Ify I'm 26 I live in Dallas Texas I make content all about self-development getting to your dream life and just the realities of going from someone with just a dream to actually living that out for me that's being a full-time content creator and entrepreneur which I have slowly been building for the last three years ever since I quit my corporate job and it's been quite the journey but I'm learning so much on this journey and I thought I would document it in real time and let's get into the video okay first and foremost we have to rebuild our relationship with trust the reason that you are so hesitant to go after your dream life or think that things are impossible or you can't achieve them is because you don't trust yourself you don't trust that you can do it and you don't trust that there's actually this life where you could be living doing everything you want to do being true to who you are getting all of the rewards getting all the benefits without having to kill yourself for it and the reason reason you don't trust is because you lack the experience. When you do something repetitively for a long period of time, you develop experience which allows you to be confident in that thing and gives you the trust when you actually follow through with it. You might have heard this from a lot of self-development and self-help people that confidence is built through repetition and showing up. Deciding that you're going to do something and actually showing up and doing it. And I think that's the thing we don't have the practice with. We have the practice with showing up for other people, for our boss, for our university, for our friends, for our family, but we don't have that same experience showing up for ourselves, which is what you need to develop so that you can become the person that you want to become and i think the trick here is that you show up even before you have the resources the skills the knowledge like show up anyway it's okay when you 
really look around and see all the people that you look up to, they never started with all of the answers. They didn't start with the guidebooks, with all of the expertise. You develop it over time. And honestly, in today's economy, I'm talking about internet attention economy. You do not have to be the most skilled person to speak on something. You do not have to be the best in the field to do something. You just need to have the intention to start. The only way to get there is through. Literally, you have to go through without all of the information to get the information. Like it's a means to an end. It is the rite of passage. And when you gain experience by showing up and doing that repetitively, you start to build the confidence and then the trust in yourself to keep going. Not only do you start to trust yourself, but because you're experiencing something over and over again, you start getting more familiar with it. It's less scary. You understand more and therefore you're more able to predict the environment as well. Before I started my brand, I thought everything was going to be confusing, hard. There's no way to do it. It's impossible. All I did was set my schedule up for success to show up at a certain time every day to talk to a certain person, like committing to things before I was ready and showing up for them repetitively made things less scary and made me more confident because I'm like, I've done this before. There's nothing unfamiliar about this anymore. And the more you do it, the less there's going to be unfamiliarity. You're gonna start to get more familiar. You're gonna start to build more confidence. You're gonna start to build more trust. And when you trust something, you show up for it. And that's the mindset that you have to develop with the things that you want in your life. When you show up for it, it will show up for you back. And if you're kind of confused on what to experiment with, what to try, what to get experience in, I have a notion guide that covers this whole topic. It's really for the explore phase, which is the last video, but it can really help you at any point. The notion guide walks through what you want to feel in your dream life and translating those feelings into actions that you can start today. And the idea is that if you feel these things, when you do certain activities and you constantly show up to do this activity, you are starting to practice and embody your dream life before it's actually here. And that's the perfect way to gain confidence in a bite-sized way. Cause I think we always try to go from zero to hundred, but we just have to start with little things. Like I'm going to practice doing dance for 30 minutes every week. I'm going to practice my art. I'm going to practice my music. All right. There's three key steps here when you are committing to your dream life. The first step is to translate that dream into a reality. Second is to hold yourself accountable. And I'll give you examples of how you can do that and how I've done that. And the last step is to maintain it because there's going to be outside forces that kind of make this hard for you, but you have to stay focused. And I have some tips on how you can keep that focus. The first thing is to translate that dream into reality. This is exactly what I'm talking about with where we have an idea in our head of what our dream life entails. I'm super rich. I live in a nice house. I have all these friends. I don't have to work all day. I make money passively. And we think that just because that sounds so far off from the life that we live today, there's no path and there's no avenue to get there. Yes, of course, you can't just jump into that new reality without doing anything, without any work. And that may not be likely, but what is likely is that if you start with one thing, build it up, move on to the next thing, build it up, move on to the next thing, build it up. You start with your friend group, you start with your health and wellness, then you go into your business. When you start doing those things one by one, it becomes more likely that you're able to have that nice house, that friend group, that amazing career where you don't have to work every day. But the mistake that many of us make is that we never take the time to translate that into reality. We just sign it off as a dream and dreams don't happen. So there's something to talk about, but that's the difference between where you are right now and where you want to be. You have to give yourself the time of day. I think about this all the time, how we give institutions, society, what our parents want, what our friends want so much time and effort. But the moment we think of something that makes us happy, that lights us up, we're like, oh no, it's too much. It doesn't make any sense. There's no way we will go through 18 years of school. We will go through four years of college. We will go through jobs that we hate for people that we don't even like. That makes no sense to me. And this is where things change. In the last video, I talked about vision boards and really buying into this vision of yourself and this story because stories sell, they work. This is where I want you to take that double down vision where I'm like, I am Delulu and this is the Salulu. Take that vision of yourself, that persona, whatever you want to call it. If you want to give yourself a name, if you need to give yourself an alter ego, do what you will. Take that version of yourself and automatically translate that into your day-to-day -day reality. You have to start showing up as this person right now. If I were to ask you, what would you do right now in this moment to be as close as you can to that person that's in your head? What would you have to start doing immediately? That is the best clue to the things that you need to be doing on a daily basis to be the person you wanna be. Now I do recommend taking baby steps because again, I never think that super fast approach works because you need to build this into where it becomes almost like a habit and instinct, but start taking that into your daily calendar. I kind of go through this exercise in the notion template where you get to journal as your future self, think of the feelings your future self feels and then bring that into your calendar with one activity at a time but if you're ready for the next step and you really want to translate full day I am the person I want to be one thing that you will benefit from is paying yourself first you might have heard this concept in finance where you pay yourself before you start paying all the other bills so that you are actually taking care of the things you want to buy and the things that you care to invest in it's the same thing but doing that with your time so you take the time that you have in a day and you divvy that up based on the things you want to do first 
you create the blueprint first and then give everybody else and everything else what's left over. And that my friends is a huge hack into how you start to live like the person you want to be before you are that person. Ultimately you're working up to the schedule that that dream you have. This is something I started doing in college and it really has just taken over since then. I've never stopped because it literally works and it's like the best thing ever but I clear the calendar. I take everything off. I know you have school, I know you have work, I know you have all these obligations but just take that off for a minute and envision what would your ideal day look like. Like what would you be doing in the morning? What would you be doing in the afternoon? What would you be doing in the evening? What does your ideal life look like? For me, this is a super long morning routine. Two to three hours of me journaling, meditating, reflecting, walking. In the middle of the day, I wanna be working on something. I like to be doing things that are more strategic planning wise, but I also like to be doing more creative things during the day, dressing up, getting ready, filming videos, making content. And then in the evening, I really like to wind down. I find best that I work out in the evening. So I do more of a wind down and then I do some more reflecting at night and then I work a little bit more. And I know what you're thinking, not all of this is possible right now. How can I be this person right now when I still have my job, my nine to five, I still work from the office, I still do all these things. It's just a starting place so that you can identify the gap and you can start plugging things into your current schedule right now. But if you never take the time to do this, even if right now you can't make it as ideal, you'll never start to see where the opportunities lie. Even when I was in college working three jobs, I was a full-time student and I still had a social life. I was able to find little gaps of things that I could do in certain ways that would make my life easier. At the time, I basically had class and work from nine to five. And sometimes in the evening, I would have to do events for one of my jobs. And I also had to do pop-up events for another one of my jobs. And what I would do is I was like, okay, I know for me, I like having mornings to myself. It cannot be this full extended eat, pray, love morning routine back when I was in college. But what I did was I said, okay, I have to be at work at 8 a.m. I'm gonna wake up three hours earlier so that I could have the time to myself and get all of my homework done get my thinking and my planning done for the day so that by the time I get home at night I can wind down and I don't have to be doing anything. It's small things like that that really make a difference in how you feel and how you think about your life. I've been doing that so much since college that now I've basically eliminated most things from my schedule so I can have my full dream day. It's acknowledging the time that you have and putting it towards the things you want and kind of taking it away from things that don't bring you joy or don't make you feel like the person that you want to be. And if you're not making the decision somebody else will. The second step to this committing phase is accountability whether that's getting an accountability partner multiple partners or just having something to keep you in check because this is going to be a hard thing to implement whatever you're putting into your day whatever you're putting into your life is new it's unfamiliar you're not going to want to do it especially on a monday when you're feeling unmotivated when it's gloomy like you need something to hold you in check i have a few ways you can do this and how i've done this in my life the first is obviously just have this kind of like one size fits all accountability partner you guys agree on your schedules on the lives that you want to live the activities you want to start adding into your life you can do it one by one like let's start with this quarter and do activity one the next quarter we can add on another activity or replace something you can have kind of this one size fits all accountability partner but I know that that's not everybody's reality I've been lucky enough to have my fiance but times where he wasn't around or when I'm by myself and I can't necessarily lean on him I kind of take into account this idea of multiple accountability partners so I find somebody in each domain that I want to improve in and I make them the accountability partner for that area so if I know my friend is really into fitness and she's really good at working out she's got that on check she's going to be the person i make one specific goal with so she holds me accountable for that whether that's checking in i have to see her every few weeks so she's going to ask me and you kind of find this for every area of your life whether that's like dating art singing whatever it is somebody you have to meet with whether that's physical or virtually just somebody to keep you in check with this thing that you said you're going to do because that's what you have to do in this committing phase you have to show up as the person that you want to be and somebody has to hold you accountable to that the social pressure really works well in this situation me and my fiance do a bi-weekly goal check-in so we set goals for each quarter and we tell each other we have to like present it like show and tell and we check in on each other and like kind of challenge each other where we feel like the other one is falling short have it somewhere where you can document and see like oh I had this problem last time I'm still having this problem or I had this problem and I've improved on this problem and if the other options are not an option for you really surround yourself with information that you really want to soak up so this could be through content this could be through your social media feed I kind of talked about this in the first video but getting rid of the junk in your feeds and your social media like you want to infuse your brain and have it subconsciously work on information that you want to learn things you want to get better at so for me my shift from last year to this year was really just following and watching videos from people that I want to be like and you almost kind of want to feel overwhelmed with the information because you're training yourself to be a different person this is where I feel like it actually benefits you to be obsessive about something and kind of get really in the weeds of something because you're learning a new skill you're learning a new lifestyle a new trait and the more you surround yourself with these things on your feeds 
things on your Instagram, whatever platforms you use, your blogs, your books, the more you surround yourself with this information, the more your brain is gonna be processing it and thinking about it. And this is where whenever you're bored or you're taking a walk or you're in the shower, these ideas come to you because you're processing information that actually leads you to where you wanna get instead of processing drama or reality TV. I definitely started listening to a lot of Dan Co, The Hormoses, Alex Hormozy, Layla Hormozy. There's a podcast I really love called Unfuck Your Brain. Super good for mindset, thinking, lifestyle change. And then reading books has been incredible. Every night and every morning, I'm taking in information that can actively help me in my business or my lifestyle or being the kind of person that I wanna be. And this might be a controversial take, but I really think you should tell people before you're ready. Tell people the person that you're trying to be before you have become that person or before you've done it. And I know what you're thinking, Huberman, everybody will tell you, do not kind of overshare and overtell your ideas because you kind of release a dopamine hit before you've actually done the thing. I totally understand that, but here's the difference. When you tell people about this person that you're gonna be or the things you're gonna do, this should not be from your ego. And I think you feel the difference. And I started to feel the difference when I would tell people when it was really just something I wanted people to think about me versus when I was telling people and this is something that I'm really passionate about and I want to do, but I'm actually kind of terrified to do it. And I felt the difference because when I would tell people because I thought it would sound cool or look cool to do that thing, I felt like it was more of a dopamine release to tell them than to do the actual thing. I was talking more than I was doing. But when I tell people now about the things that I want to do or the person that I want to become, I'm a little hesitant and I go through anyway. And the reason I go through anyway is because I am trying to hold myself accountable through my social network. I am trying to hold myself accountable because the social pressure that we feel is biological. We want to fit in. We don't want to look stupid. That's why public speaking is one of the hardest things for literally the entire human race. We do not want the cognitive dissonance in our head of I said I'm doing this and I'm doing something completely opposite. We like to live up to our word. That's something that's already within us. And I was like, let me use that to an advantage. If I said I'm going to learn French, which I'm currently in the process of learning French, I have to learn it if I tell people that I'm learning French because that's going to be a topic of conversation the next time they see me. I told people I was going to learn French and that was before I started studying anything. That was before I got into anything. And I was nervous because I was like, I have never done this before. What if I fail? But I actually have to get started because I told literally like half my network that I'm learning French. And to no surprise, I'm in the process of learning French and I'm practicing it three times a week. And this is more than I ever thought I would do. I've never learned a language. I'm actually a pretty slow learner. I'm actually a pretty slow reader, but because I have that pressure in my head that like, this is something people are expecting of me and they will remember, I want to stick to my word. It's less of an exciting thing to talk about and it's more of an exciting thing to do. And the last step is to maintain this dream life, maintain this persona that you said that you're going to invest in. This is where you need to get laser focused because this is where it gets hard. This is where you don't feel disciplined. This is where you don't feel motivated, but you have to keep going anyway because this is what you said you're going to do and you have to show up to build the confidence. For me, I truly, truly believe in the Atomic Habits way. Set up your environment for success. You need to make it easy to keep these new habits, these new routines, these new activities in your life, this new mindset. And that's where it becomes super important to watch what you put yourself around and watch what you expose yourself to. You want to keep information around that's in reinforcing or reaffirming the beliefs that you want to believe. Not that I cut myself off from TV and all that, but most of the content that I consume really reinforces the mindset that I want to have. You can't have everything you want. You are capable of being rich. You are capable of building a business, building a team. And it's really important now to do it in the beginning because you're going to be fragile. You're going to be more fragile than somebody who's been doing this for five years or 10 years. This year, I've had to kind of be a little bit more harsh and cut off things. And that may all sound like a negative. It's actually easier for me to stick into this routine for longer periods of time than to like hop out of it, come back in because it's harder for me to do that while I'm shifting. Like I'm in the process of transitioning into this new lifestyle, this new persona. So it's harder for me to kind of go back and forth and back and forth because I'm telling myself all of these new, hard, uncomfortable things and I don't have any of the environment to set it up for success. It makes it harder when I'm not in my routine, not in the environment that helps me succeed. So some of the things I do to really maintain this new identity and some of the things I think you can do is really detox your brain from the dopamine. Dopamine detoxes are honestly one of my favorite things. It's so incredibly hard to do. I literally feel like I'm coming off one now. I just had a vacation for a few days. It was all fun and good because I think you also need breaks, but getting back into the routine is so hard, like I was saying. So having some kind of routine around that dopamine detox will be very helpful so you can get like snap back into the mentality that sets you on track. So this could look like not having your phone for a few days, like take 24 to 48 hours without your phone, get off the feed. They will tempt you into the old lifestyle. They will tempt you back into feeling comfortable because the new life is going to be uncomfortable. It's gonna be hard. It's not gonna seem flattering when you're sitting on the couch enjoying yourself watching 
love is blind you're not going to want to do those things unless you're in it and start seeing the reward but just do things in the present moment if i'm working out i'm just working out or maybe even taking a walk without my headphones or washing dishes while doing nothing else like just doing one thing at a time being very present within a few days i'm pretty back to normal and then it starts to become fun to do those things that are a little bit more mundane when i tell you that turning off my phone notifications changed the game for me i'm not exaggerating i don't know why i just didn't consider this before but i officially at the beginning of this year turned off my cell phone notifications so i don't get text message notifications on my phone at all i also don't get calls unless it's like my mother or my fiance and this really helped me to focus throughout the day because i just feel like i'm the kind of person if i see a task it needs to get done and even though that can be very beneficial when it comes to my work when it came time to notification people calling people needing things it just split my attention it made me feel like something else needs to get done but that's not toward my goal and i really hope everyone has this on their phone already but turning off app notifications i've had that off for a while so tiktok instagram youtube i don't have any notifications i deleted youtube studio like i just took off anything that encourages that dopamine hit like i said when you're building this dream life you're gonna need your creativity it's actually really important like these long morning routines and reflections at night are not just a fun self-care activity it's actually kind of hard to do most of the time it's not super motivating not super cute or romantic it's just kind of like the boring mundane stuff but when you start to see how that affects you over a period of time you're like this is so worth it i can't go back the other way i also put my phone away at night in a different location so i'll put it on that table even though i sleep there just having my phone in a different location immediately changes how long i'm scrolling i actually don't scroll anymore at night because i just keep it on that table right when i get into bed and i know Notice when I put it on my nightstand, I'm immediately sucked back into the TikTok doom scrolling, Instagram scrolling. So just setting yourself up for success in those ways and knowing yourself and knowing your environment really, really save you from retracting back into the person that you were. And to that point, having alone time. I feel like people do not like to be alone and it is probably one of the best spots to be in. You actually get sober thoughts. You're not like infiltrated with other people's thoughts and what other people think about something. You actually get time to be yourself. You get time to understand yourself observe your mind observe what's happening this could be even through journaling reflecting taking walks like setting up time to intentionally be alone even if that's like a few hours at a coffee shop just doing something where you don't have so many thoughts in your brain i feel like it gives your brain the chance to be creative think of new ideas a lot of times people don't see this boredom and this slow period as a good thing they see it as a negative thing but this is a tool like boredom is a constraint and when you're bored your mind actually has time to solve problems that you actually want to solve instead of problems that are maybe from your body Boss or maybe from your family or maybe from your friends that are not your actual issues in life that you want to solve. Being able to practice hobbies and work uninterrupted and be focused on one thing at a time with yourself and by yourself is a skill and you need it a lot when you're building something new, especially your dream life. If you're trying to get really good at an art form, if you're trying to get really knowledgeable in a subject, you need to be able to be by yourself for a longer period of time so you have time to reflect, be creative, get innovative with the things that you want to do in your life and actually turn that into a job or a career your energy and your time are finite and the more you realize this the more you stop wasting it on things that are not getting you closer to where you want to get it's not easy and that's why not a lot of people do it but it is effective and my last trick here is to use the hell yes test as somebody who was kind of raised in a people pleasing environment this really saved me and like liberated me from doing a lot of things that didn't go towards my goal i asked myself a simple question is this a hell yes and if i can't say yes to that question given my schedule or what i've already set for myself to do if it's not a hell yes it's most likely a hell no this just levels up how many things i have in my day and what's important to me what's not important to me if it's not a hell yes if i'm not immediately lit up by an idea whether that's a social interaction with somebody whether that's an event whether that's a meeting or an assignment if i'm not immediately lit up by this idea it's most likely not something that i want to do right now it doesn't mean i shouldn't do it at all but maybe it just needs to be postponed is this a hell yes to you right now does this feel like something you immediately feel drawn to so when i started implementing this rule I realized I didn't have a lot of social obligations and not only just that I felt so much better I had so much more energy I was in a better mood when I did have social obligations to the more hell yes ones so asking yourself these things about the activities you're doing will really help you decipher what needs to stay and what needs to go because it's a it's a routine you have to maintain it and you have to keep removing and adding things as you see fit and this really helps me always like reset and be like that's not something I really want to do and I don't have to do it right now or I don't have to do it at all and of course there's things like work or school where you need the income you're trying to go towards your degree you need to go to class there's things like your homework or your shift that are not going to feel like a hell yes but you can ask yourself on a bigger scale is having this job a hell yes is having this title a hell yes 
success is getting this degree a hell yes and honestly you might be surprised even if it's those bigger things that you might think it's a hell no and I think I would just highly encourage you to explore that if you want to watch a video of me talking about all the signs I need to leave corporate I'll put that video here but sometimes that can even change how you feel about the bigger things in your life um, a relationship a job a career path for the smaller things the interruptions the daily distractions really start considering if that's a hell yes or a hell no and I want you to know this is not about perfection this is about going more in the direction that you want to get instead of the one that you're currently in this is about becoming a better evolved version of yourself and not changing who you are this is just the key to unlocking what feels like you what doesn't feel like you but those are all of my tips for the commit stage if you want to learn more about the three e's i highly recommend watching the full series and downloading the free ebook it's going to be free for a limited time so make sure you get your download in the description and check out san jason we have a lot of tips guides and resources coming soon i'm so excited to share about that thanks for sticking around for the series and i hope to see you in my next video bye